it's it just reminds me it reminds me of this t-shirt I had as a as a teenager and I forget where I got it but it said it was a black t-shirt with white printing that said uh you laugh because I'm different and I laugh because you're all the same but then someone said to me when I wore the shirt he's like well yeah you and like the hundred other people who bought the same exact t-shirt this is not an interview there is no format this is simply a conversation about life okay so okay so you got these you got these pictures right you got these different hair colors Mm mm-hmm and then it, there seems like now you you got your natural hair color. And I was wondering if there was like some significance with this. Yes, but it's it's a there is significance. But the significance is that it's a growth and an evolution of myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I was. I was 12 when I cut my hair short, like, you know, very short uh, from traditional long hair. I was 13 when I dyed it blue for the first time. Mm -hmm. And then pretty much from 13 until 26, except for like a year here and there, I was constantly bleaching it and dyeing it. Um, I've had locks, which I have now a few uh, I had a mohawk. Yeah. yeah, that's the that's the remnants of. Oh, I didn't even. You know what? I thought you were wearing like a. I didn't even see. No, yeah, that's just that's just my that's my hair. Yeah, all all natural, not uh, okay. no extensions. Yeah, I didn't I didn't even know that was a part of your hair. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So it it was. As a as a preteen, I was very I was very uh, occupied, preoccupied with being different in some way, standing out, um, or more even just not fitting in. I feel like it was more of a priority and not fitting in rather than standing out in particular. Mm-hmm. Um, Interesting. So I was I became a I mean, it's, it's, it's a, I would say it's a combination of, of things. It was the not wanting to fit in, uh, not being comfortable with myself or my body because I hit puberty fairly early. Mm. Um, not having the confidence or being comfortable putting myself into certain girly or preppy or popular um, archetypes or trends. And I loved color, but I also loved the darker things. I liked gothic aesthetic and music and metal aesthetic and music. And I mean, yes, those are two different sub cultures but they're very closely connected it's you know they're they're mostly friends um and so i would dress in all black but then i would have like rainbow of hair colors and i always had colorful jewelry um and as much as i there was a part of me that did love and I still do um, love the aesthetic and the subculture itself. Uh, I realized that part of it also was giving into my insecurities. Um, like black doesn't show sweat stains and black is supposed to be very slimming color. And you don't have to worry about coordinating colors when you're wearing black every day. Mm-hmm. Um, That's why I do it. Right. It is. There is a simplicity about beautiful, streamlined simplicity to it. Uh, but, and I wore heavy makeup every day. Um, I would do different 
different kinds of eyeshadows and eyeliners and graphic liners and glitter. And I used to have a lot more piercings in my face. Um, I was very much trying to find a way to alter my, my appearance. Um, and I don't have any tattoos, so I wasn't trying to go that far, mm -hmm. but like not permanently. Not right. Mm -hmm. Not permanently. Like I like piercings and hair color and jewelry and clothing because you can change it every day. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, as I got older and as I started looking, cause you know, you create these, you get into these habits when you're a teen or then again, you may ch make some changes in your early twenties. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of took a step back and, and analyzed these, these habits that I kind of taken, started to take for granted of myself. And it's like, why am I doing this? Like, why am I dressing? in all black every day and like my hair is bleached and damaged and I can't, you know, I touch it and, and I, I'm not happy. Yeah. 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 So it became more, well, I call it like embrace the face, like just accepting my face for how it is because it's, it's the one that I have. I'm not going to change it. And, I was spending, you know, an hour and a half getting ready to leave the house every day. And it was, it was a hobby of mine to, to do my hair and to get dressed. And if that's something that someone wants to invest time and money into, I think that's fabulous. And yeah, great. You enjoyed it. Like you enjoyed it. I did. It. Yeah. But it did get to the point where I realized, you know, I'm spending a lot of time doing this is there other things that I want to be spending my time doing, especially because a lot of these habits came from masking insecurities. Mm. Um, and I still, from time to time, love to do my makeup and get dressed up and put that effort and time into it. Mm -hmm. But in that case, I find it more accentuating rather than trying to hide or mask mm -hmm. or cover. <clears throat> so but, now, cause I'm, I'm curious cause you said, you said not fitting cause it was an effort to not fit in at, at, at the beginning or was this always the case? Not, not fit in with who? With the group. I mean, I remember I was the group, the proverbial, whatever group I was in pretty mm -hmm. much. Um, mm -hmm. like I remember I was I was in a day camp I think I was 10 mm -hmm. or so um and it was a day camp you know I grew up in New York City and so we would go out on trips for the day and to keep all the children identified they gave us t-shirts that we all had to wear Mm -hmm. with the cam name on it mm -hmm. and for whatever reason i refused to wear the t-shirt mm. i would tie it around my head as a <laughs> bandana i would tuck it into the waist of my jeans yeah. i would i would do pretty much anything to just not wear this shirt because mm. i didn't want to be told i don't know be told what to do i i can't get into my 10 year old psychology right now but there's mm. just this and the same, like around the same age, I started to become to dress in a very tomboy way. Mm -hmm. So when a lot of my peers started to experiment with makeup and bras, I was shopping exclusively in the boys and men's department. It wasn't until like my 20s that I started experimenting with makeup and, mm. and things like that and even in that case I went instead of going instead of going the cosmopolitan route I went the more gothic route so I okay. did experiment with makeup but it was very much like all right I'll do girly now but I'm going to do girly mm. in my way yeah yeah so then what happens when you <clears throat> like you find the scene or whatever right 
and then everyone is looking like you in the scene. What, how, yeah. how, how does that work? Like, do you, did you, oh, no, okay. Uh, no, it's, it's a bit, it's a bit of, um, either you, either you're content on being like the one person of your friend group, because mm -hmm. I never hung out very much with other people who dressed like me. I mean, it was very much like a similar kind of, like I said, like the metal kids and the punk kids and the goth kids all kind of hung out, but mm -hmm. there is still distinction in the subcultures among, you know, when you put them all together. Right. Um, and There's a bit, I guess there's a bit of cognitive dissonance in that because I never actually went to a goth club until I moved to Berlin. Ooh. Oh. And yeah. Um, but I remember when I went, it was very, it was actually pretty refreshing of like, oh, these are like, I really like the way everyone here is dressed and like, I like the music that's being played here. Mm -hmm. And, but then a little bit at the same time, then you have to go even more above and more beyond to try to stand out, yeah. which in some ways is a, is a welcome challenge. Mm. Um, but I think that's kind of true of a lot of, a lot of subcultures is that you do get down to the point where you are dressing the same unless you're able to somehow create a completely unique form of individuality where you fit in with absolutely no group of people yeah. either politically aesthetically right. musically yeah. um but it's it just reminds me it reminds me of this t-shirt i had as a as a teenager and I forget where I got it, but it said, it was a black t-shirt with white printing that said, uh, you laugh because I'm different and I laugh because you're all the same. Mm. But then someone said to me when I wore the shirt, he's like, well, yeah, you and like the hundred other people who bought the same exact t-shirt. And it's kind of this like yeah. trying to stand out, but then you still, kind of have to conform to something yeah. unless you're able to grow into and fit into yourself. Mm. And that was part of what the evolution, the part of my evolution that I'm in now mm -hmm. is, is that I, if you, Stay true to yourself. You don't have to feel like you're trying to put yourself in a certain, mm -hmm. a certain kind of box. But if you're, if you're able to, and you have the skills, you should be able to still navigate the world, but in your own way yeah. without having to subscribe to a certain subculture or a certain group. Right. Mm, yes. This, we're on the same page with this. We're definitely on the same page with this because I would say when once you realize like the best way, like uh, I won't say the best way, but one of the best ways to be unique is to really be yourself. And and when you're truly being yourself, it's like it doesn't really have to do with how you dress or like what you're trying to tell people you know, because I, I do think that, like, sometimes, I mean, I had my own form of this, you know, I went through a whole, a few different um, scenes and stuff as well. And, um, you know, but it really, it's almost like, if you're doing it with your clothes, if you're doing it so much with your appearance, it's almost like, are you really are you really doing it or are you just trying to get us all to believe that this is what you are because i remember seeing someone around my university campus 
and and it and it at least to me it seemed very clear that she was trying very hard to be quirky mm-hmm. instead of being quirky she seemed like she was like trying to portray quirkiness in a way you know i do yeah and so and i'm not saying that this is i mean obviously if you're living it it's it's who you are and and you have years of being this way so it is who you are but the you know if you're actively thinking oh i need to do this to let people know that i'm different you know yeah i don't know if that means you've actually accepted it for yourself like you know what i mean i do yeah if you because that means that you're gearing your actions towards the perception of others mm. or the way that other people perceive you which is i mean in many cases in society and living amongst other humans necessary mm-hmm. but it's not how you get that that true sense of self that grants us our individuality right. so and yeah there is it's funny it's funny how when you spend time with a person you can you can sometimes tell when you know are you are you this or are you you saw someone be this and you thought it was cool and now this is what you're trying to be and i do think that it is necessary or at least not necessary but i certainly don't hold it against anyone i mean i am included for people that bounce from one thing to another try on different identities cuz you know even if like you know mom mom said it was just a phase okay well it's a phase that helped me take a step to finding out what i am comfortable with Mm-hmm. who i actually authentically would like to be mm-hmm. and hopefully that's something that you know we all can do our whole lives and so some people are going to be in certain different stages than others but it is when you're when you're trying to craft yourself to give a certain image to others because you think it's cool to be quirky or to be you know ultra intellectual or ultra mystic um yeah i don't think that that's not really doing anyone any favors inclu- especially yourself 